talked about, I was still learning who Jesus is. I was thinking Jesus is a was, you know, I just had no clue. And on January 2nd, 1972, others have heard this, but others have not. He one night in a church service engulfed me with his spirit. For over 20 minutes, I spoke in fluent Russian. Never spoke it before, never spoke it after. Did I recognize it? Yes. And some of the people that were there did because they told me they had never seen anyone speak fluent Russian before. And then they proceeded to tell me what I had received. And of course, I had no clue what that was. I had to do some studying and learning. And the Spirit of God is given to us to lead us and guide us into all truth, which he has done ever since that day. Um, he engulfed me that day. It wasn't just a little dab, a few little words, a few little things, and like what I'm seeing right now. Uh, what I see in you is real and genuine. And um, I want to commend you on the teaching, not that I know everything, because you have taught me something tonight, and I want to congratulate you. Beforehand, though, I want to go into when the Gentiles received the in Acts chapter 10. It says that the, we hear them speak such as we had on that on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. I was I've always wondered, and I, there's no way of knowing, I'm sure, because the it was Hebrew people that were there. Peter was Peter's a Jew. He's a Hebrew. I'm wondering if the uh, people at um, um, Cornelius's house were speaking because they're Gentiles. They wouldn't have been speaking the Hebrew language. I wonder if they were speaking in Hebrew. It was just a thought that I wanted. No, to I thought about that. That's a very interesting thought. You know, it's yeah. kind of strange because if you look at Pentecost. You know, there's so much information we're not given, you know, and right. if you look at Pentecost, you see that it does say they spoke with new tongues. They but yet when you see what other people heard, they heard their own language. So it was almost like a miracle of the hearing. And so it's possible that Cornelius and them were speaking whatever they were speaking and that Peter and them were hearing it in their own language. That certainly is possible. That's right. And they were hearing them magnify the Lord. Something that you mentioned that I had never considered and I and I ju I've just never seen it which doesn't mean anything you were talking about on the day of Pentecost that there was because it was a real language there were those that were the ones that would receive and say you know what me what means this they were pricked in their hearts and then there were those that were the mockers and I've never, ever seen that. And I just wanted to tell you, thank you, because this gives me a, a new concept on that, because the word of God is the living. It's it's always something that this, we're always getting something new out of it. It doesn't mean that it's a whole new revelation. It just means I've never seen it. No, that's that's the way the Lord deals with people. I mean, he opens things up to me all the time. So I'm I'm happy to to be his vessel. I'm happy to be used. Um, I see that we do have Brother Bruce. So I'm going to ask the panel, if you guys don't mind, mute your mics for a few minutes. And I will try to get back to the comments, the questions that I have missed. I'm sorry, comments section. But I did promise Brother Bruce that he and I would discuss and, this question. That's absolutely fine. Thank you. And thank you for coming back, Brother Bruce. I'm going to mute my mic and listen in as long as I can. Okay, uh, Bruce, uh, you have the floor. If you have any questions or things you'd like to say, you have the floor. Before I take the floor, did you guys mock before I came on? I don't think so. Okay, good, because I hate walking on a sticky floor. Bruce, I, love to, I don't know. That's crazy. Oh, you said mop. I thought you said mock. <laughs> yeah, mop the floor. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm assuming you're here to mop the floor with me. Indeed. Okay. Proceed. Christian, you're def out of all the people I've ran into on this show, you definitely show the most Christ-like characteristics. You're, you are kind. You're genuine. Um, I heard you don't wear shorts. <laughs> I know there's reasons for That's it, man. I, attention. I don't know. But uh, there's reasons for it, man. You know, it's because uh, people judge. They look. They they lust upon. You know, the more skin showed. But I know there's 
I, I don't know, man, but you, you obviously really do have the character. conservative uh, interpretation, if that's what you mean. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It is a very conservative dress code. You know, uh, years back, people didn't wear shorts, and that's why, because it, I don't know. Anyways, but um, no, man, you, you definitely are, you're a man of God, no doubt. But it's just your just a little out of context on multiple things. Um, okay. I didn't find there, there. You said a lot. I agree with. Um, you're not as crazy Pentecostal as I maybe I maybe thought there too. But before I forget this question, you kind of said this just a few minutes ago. There, uh, you said being filled, speaking in tongues is not necessary to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But, or no, what did you say? It, what I was saying was that I do not believe in what the Pentecostals call the initial evidence. I do not believe that any certain working of the spiritual gifts is necessary for salvation because when Paul wrote to the church and he identified that I'm writing this to the body of Christ, he said, all do not speak with tongues. And so if speaking with tongues was necessary, Paul would not have said that. I agree with that. And I didn't really expect you to say that. Um, well, I'm not a but I wonder though if if they're not always filled with the spirits while they're speaking in tongues, what are they being filled with while they're speaking in tongues then? Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. So is it when someone speaks in tongues, are they always being filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, I, I totally believe that it is certainly possible that many, many people imitate or fake the gift of tongues. And I would say the vast majority of them. So I'm, I'm in agreement with you about that. The thing that I'm in disagreement with okay, you about. Okay, so. Well, let me let me finish this thought real quick. Go ahead. I, I'm in agreement with you that most of the supposed spiritual gifts working in the church are fake. I agree with you about that. But I do not agree with you that they're all fake. Because the apostles said they would be in the church and he said not to forbid them. Right. So that would be relevant if that was in context. Because I believe. After completely, Bruce. How much more context can you ask for? So if a lot of them are abusing it and mimicking speaking in tongues, how do you distinguish distinguish the ones that are not mimicking? Well, he, he addressed that in the text. Were you here for the whole teaching, Bruce? I was. Okay. In he addressed spirit. that. He addressed that in the text. He said, if someone goes to speak with tongues in the church service, let it be by course, by two or three at the most. And if there's no one there to interpret, let them speak to themselves and to so, God, not interrupt the service. So he addressed that. Like I said, that would be correct if the context was correct. How do you what know he's not referring to other? Correct? How do you know he's not referring to other languages that people spoke at the Church of Corinth? Because all through that chapter, he speaks of an unknown tongue that no man understandeth that requires spiritual interpretation. He's very clear in that chapter and in the chapter before that, in chapter 13, that in that point of the doctrine, he's speaking specifically about an unknown tongue that requires a supernatural interpretation. He's very clear about it. But how do you, so you don't believe that it's an unknown language that maybe someone else speaks, but the majority doesn't? I'm sure that there are there are certainly instances of that. There are certainly accounts in the scripture. It doesn't say that they speak with a different language, but it says that the people hear in their own native language. So it's kind of like the same, you know, two two sides of the same coin kind of thing. So there are certainly instances where it's a language thing, but it's still supernatural. It's still them speaking so, a language they don't understand. And there are, also, there are also instances of an unknown tongue that no man understands it. Like where? Right there in the beginning of chapter 14. We just read it, Bruce. In 1 Corinthians? Mm -hmm. I tried to be as thorough as I could because I knew you were going to use the word context, but that's why I read three entire chapters. And that was Corinthians, right? Yes. Okay. So the mysteries. You believe that's an unknown language that no one else can interpret. It is not referring to a language that someone speaks, such as Spanish, Latin, I, Hebrew. I didn't say I believe that, Bruce. I said that you cannot rule that out by the text. That is a possibility according to the text. Possibility. Sure. Well, the Book of Mormon says if you believe this book is true. So that's a possibility also. But do you have any other scripture that validates? 
Yes, I do. Paul said, I speak with tongues more than you all, but I would rather speak five words with my understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. It's the same chapter. What verse is that? I don't know. Uh, I just read. So just in the very beginning, if verse two was not referring to an unknown language that was given to someone by the Holy Spirit, but it is referring to speaking a different language, which Paul did speak. He spoke okay. several, if not many, different languages. How could you rule out that verse two is not referring to a unknown language given by the Spirit, but it's maybe, re well, it is. It is referring to a different language that the majority well, of people just didn't speak and understand. Say. You certainly can't say that it is, but I can address the question. Well, how can you say that it's not? I'm going to address the question. In in Acts chapter 2, when this phenomenon begins, it uses the phrase that they spake with, quote, new tongues. If you go over a little bit to those verses in Corinthians, it says in those verses that he began to speak or that they would begin to speak with unknown tongues. Now, if you look back at the gifts of the spirit, which Paul itemized back, and I think it was chapter 12, he said that speaking with tongues, which require interpretation, was one of the gifts of the spirit. And in Acts chapter two, it says they spoke with these new tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. So even if you were arguing that it was different languages, it was still a supernatural thing where they were speaking languages they had never been taught. So you can't get out of the supernatural part of it, Bruce. Well, what validates that it's referring to a supernatural language? That, because that's it says, what I'm... as the Spirit gave them utterance, they spake with new tongues. And when Paul listed the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, he listed speaking with these Slow tongues. Slow down. Now the I'm Spirit. from the city. I talk fast. <laughs> Bruce. So in, in, in this passage in Corinthians pause, 14. Pause, pause, pause real quick. Pause real quick. Because all you're doing is looping over the same question because you don't like the answer. No, you're not giving me pause, the answer, pause, Speaking in tongues, whether it was an unknown language or a known language, was a supernatural thing of a person saying something they had never been taught. So whether you believe it's an unknown language or a known language, it was a language they didn't know. It was a miracle. But in Corinthians 14, they're not necessarily referring to what took place at Pentecost. Yes, they are. At Pentecost, they heard everyone else that's not the, the only thing it says bruce when they were in the upper room before they went out of the upper room it says when the cloven tongues appeared above them they spake with new tongues as the spirit gave utterance and it was after it was noised abroad that those people heard it in different languages which was also a supernatural thing by the way indeed i, I have no doubt but so it, well let me finish this thought real quick if your point is that you don't believe that there's any unknown angelic tongue that no man can understand I'm not going to fuss with you about that. I disagree with you, but I don't care. But oh, either way, you don't care, huh? Hold on. Either way, you have to concede that it was a supernatural thing happening to them, even if it was a language. The fact that they understood different languages being spoke that they did not understand is definitely a supernatural experience given of the Holy Spirit. But that does not continue. There not is that. another instance where that does you know concur, but a lot of what, what is happening here in, in the church of Corinth is not referring to that type of instance. It is referring to people speaking and prophesying, you know, what God is laying in their heart and then preaching it to people who don't understand it. That's why if we go down to 13, Paul tells people to interpret, you know, what, what is being said. Because if you don't understand, Bruce, you're getting out of context. The interpretation of tongues was also one of the supernatural gifts of the spirit. Well, who interprets? Bruce, why are you doing this runaround thing? Because you don't like Who interprets, Christian? Bruce, Bruce, hold on. I have to stop you for the sake of the audience. Just like healing and prophecy were gifts of the spirit, the interpretation of unknown tongues was a supernatural gift of the spirit. Who Not interprets? Hold on, Bruce. Let me finish my thought. It was not just a person that knew that language. That is false doctrine. So who interprets them? The Spirit of God interprets through a member of the church. Oh, so see, see, this is what charismatic churches do. You no, know, this they, is what Paul did, Bruce. Well, yeah, because Paul spoke different languages. Yeah, that's not what he said, Bruce. 
That's not what so, he said. I he's guess the, the, the men and of angels. All right, this is the typical Bruce Christian. Come on, man. The tongues of angels, Bruce. Don't lie to this audience. Paul spoke with unknown tongues that no man knew. He said this. The only one lying is you. Bruce, Bruce, Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. So that's referring to the supernatural. You don't think that it was supernatural what happened at Pentecost? No, I, I do. I said that, but I don't believe that that verse you're referencing there about Paul speaking in different tongues and in, to the angels is referring to some supernatural language that no one can interpret. Do you think just everybody around like Cappadocia or, you know, Phrygia knew the tongues of angels? Well, what are the tongues of angels, Christian? They're unknown tongues that require... What a... What scripture validates... You just read it. Bruce in 14, he said that if you speak in this, that no man understandeth, pray that you may interpret, because you're speaking mysteries in the Spirit unto God. That's, That's referring to tongues of angels? Yes. What other verse validates that? Could you cross-reference that? Paul said, I speak in the tongues of angels, Bruce. What verse is that? Reference it with. What verse is that? That was, let me pull it back up. That was at the beginning, I think, of, yeah, of chapter 13. In Corinthians, right? Yes. Well, we've been in 1 Corinthians this whole time, 12, 13, and 14. You're in Acts 2. Well, that was, you? we've been in Corinthians for a while, but yes. Acts 2, Acts 10, Acts 19. Corinthians 13 what? Uh, 13 and 1. Though I speak with tongues of men, and of angels, and have not charity, I am become of sounding brass in a tinkling cymbal. Yes. And though I have the gift of prophecy... Yes, we already read the whole chapter. All right, well, let me just grasp it for myself. Because, like I said, I'm trying to verify that this passage of Scripture validates 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 1, that says that this is a gift of a supernatural language. That's what I'm trying to verify. Well, actually, Bruce, all I was saying was that that is a possibility. Possibility. It could, oh, it so could it's all, not what Scripture all, says. All, it's a possibility what Scripture Bruce, says. Bruce, Bruce, I'm not letting you overtalk me. We're not doing that. All I was saying was you cannot, as some Baptist person who's very zealous. Don't, Baptist, don't, go, don't go bashing my Baptist faith. I'm going to because they've dispelled all the gifts of the Spirit against the advice of the apostles. Because what it's I, heresy. Hold on. No, no, it's not heresy because we read it in the Bible, Bruce. What I was saying was that you cannot rule out that it was an unknowable tongue because of what Paul had said. And earlier. you can't rule it in. But Bruce, even if it was a knowable tongue, it was still a supernatural thing of a tongue you never spoke before. And so Pentecost, even the way you slice it, it it's supernatural. But it's not a reoccurring instance that happens in today's he churches. Said, forbid it not twice. That's out of context. Bruce, he said forbid not. To yeah, speak if you tongue. have another you person that... People. From speaking in tongues, you are violating Paul's. He's doctrine. referring to language. Forbid it not be Bruce, spoken and preached in another language. language. We already know that. We because uh, the only way we know that is because you say so, and you can't Bruce, prove it through Bruce, scripture. I read a bunch of scripture very carefully. We know for sure he was not just referring to some language. Can you refer to any other verses of scripture that validate that it was referring I'm not to? I'm going to read those three chapters all over again. All right. Well, I got some that do. Turn to the book of Romans, if you may. Okay. Where do you want to go in the book of Romans? Chapter 3. Okay, let me pull it up. Hold on. Okay, chapter 3. 13. 3 and 13. Okay. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Mm -hmm. Their tongues, they have used deceit. Mm -hmm. The poison of asps is under their lips. Okay. Is that referring to speaking in tongues? Obviously not, Bruce. So, do you think the what, poison? What does it mean? They with their oh, tongues. Hold on, hold on. Do you think the poison of asps was under Peter and Paul's lips? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just like saying what? the context of tongues. You're, you keep using this word context like you understand it. We read three entire. What makes you think I don't understand it? Because you're connecting this quote from an Old Testament thing in Proverbs to the gift of the Spirit that said was the Spirit doing it. So what I'm my point is tongues is either referring. Excuse me, tongues is either referring to your tongue in your mouth, which controls your speech and language, or the language that you're speaking. 
It is not referring, there's no indication in scripture that it is a unknown language yes, given there is. from the spirit. Yes, there is. He says other Acts, than other than first Corinthians twelve and thirteen, can and you Acts name two it? and Acts two, as the Spirit gave them utterance, Bruce, it says. So anytime you you see utterance in scripture, that means they're speaking in tongues. Bruce, I thought we were talking about context. In that verse, it said when they were speaking in tongues. What happened to your love of context, Bruce? I, I do, but you're not identifying that you could possibly be taking it out of context by Bruce, giving credibility Bruce, by giving credibility chapters, to this unknown language that you're making up. Making up what, Bruce? I'm, you think I'm making up that the early church had supernatural gifts? You don't think that's in the Bible? No, but if you believe that in today's age, speaking with tongues is being filled with the Holy Spirit, you're deceived. Bruce, I've already said that I don't believe any certain gift of the Spirit has to accompany salvation has to well then why does it even come at all then why do you think paul was such a moron he said all these gifts would be in the church because god put them there but it's referring to language not Bruce, some it's random not speaking. referring to language we already dispelled that that's not true it's, it's not referring, referring to, to someone language? saying something they did not understand before even if it was language it would be a supernatural thing and be like me starting to speak russian right now well, that, that's exactly what it would mean. If you would, were starting to speak Russian, you would be speaking in a different tongue. And if you were to give the whole preaching in Russian, it wouldn't edify anybody because no one could understand. Bruce, he dealt with that. He said, yeah, and he said, hey, if you have someone to interpret someone not, speaking in Russian, forbid it not. Said. That's not all he said, Bruce. He said, in the spirit, you speak mysteries to God. Pray that you may interpret so the church can be edified. That's what but who said. interprets? You can't answer that. This, yeah, I did answer it, Bruce. Interpretation of tongues was another gift of the Spirit that was listed in chapter 12. So uh, who interprets the the, the Bruce, the a member of the church as the Spirit acts upon them. And it how do you determine that? Bruce, Bruce, why are you doing this? Do you not believe in the gifts of the Spirit? Do you think Paul was Here, praying? Christian, let me, let me tell you why I believe this is a heresy. There is a church. Well, we know for sure that it's not a heresy. But you can explain why you think well, it's... Let me describe to you what I've seen with the charismatic, charismatic church and why they... You, you said it yourself. You, you you disagree with the majority of Pentecostal churches. But I disagree they, with all the Baptists, Bruce. I'm sorry to hear that. Me too. That means I'm you disagree with the majority of the Bible then too. <laughs> Bruce, we're reading the Bible. You're just quoting off Baptist nonsense. But you're reading the Bible out of context, no, so that's no, not, not. not. I've used perfect context, Bruce. You said who absolutely not. Hold on, hold on, pause real quick. Let me correct you for the audience. You said who interprets. I said over here, interpretation was a gift given to one of the members of the you church. You still can't very answer that. Who interprets? Perfect context, Bruce. Perfect context. Who's supposed to interpret? You, you, a you member know. of the church who the Spirit is acting upon. Paul okay, says it very plainly. So let me describe to you, Christian, of how this charismatic church interprets their tongue. I'm not charismatic, Bruce. I'm a Christian. That's why I'm reading the Bible. Okay, whatever. You're uh, anyway. So this church, when someone speaks in tongues, they believe exactly what you're saying that the Spirit comes over somebody and they interpret what that person is saying and the Hebrew gibbery gibberish that they are reciting. And you know what they are doing? They are following their flesh you know they're literally going up to this person as they're speaking a bunch of mumbo jumbo while they're claiming they're being filled with the holy ghost speaking in this mumbo jumbo and then this interpreter that they give this false credit to this false claim to have the authority to interpret tongues literally just guesses something that's going on in this person's life and they somehow try to mingle and blend it together as some sort of spiritual voice from god it's heresy, and like you said, that's why you disagree with a lot of people that mimic speaking in tongues. This is what the majority of them do. They mimic what is being preached out of context from Scripture, but overall, it's, it's not the Holy Spirit that's making them speak some utterances that no one could really interpret in English, Spanish, or any language. It's demonic. Well, nobody fact, would interpret it that way anyways, Bruce. It would be a supernatural gift to interpret it. But how are you determining that supernatural gift? Because he said interpretation of the uh, tongues was one of the gifts. But what are you interpreting? That's all with? context, Bruce. You should take some notes. I did. But what are you trying to interpret, though, that you're Bruce, given the Bruce, gift to interpret? Paul, hold on just a second. Paul said, forbid not. To speak with tongues. Does speak with church, languages. Hold on, hold on, pause real quick. Does your church forbid the speaking of tongues? 
if someone just starts having well, a seizure question, in the really? middle of the service, we will probably ask if they're okay and then possibly take them out to the auditorium so they're not disrupting the spirit of the so service. Back to the question. Paul said forbid not to speak with tongues. You need so to consider that that's... Forbid to speak with tongues, Bruce? You need to consider that that's referring to language. But it's not. We already read all through it. It's referring to unknown tongues. But it is. No, it's not, Bruce. It's not. That's a false doctrine. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophecy, which is mm -hmm. preaching, prophecy. and forbid no, not to speak not. in tongues. No, it's not. Prophesying is predicting the future, Bruce. Do you predict the future? Prophets do, Bruce. So who is a prophet to you? Bruce, do you believe that prophecy is the predicting of the future? Sure, but we but, have so the prophecy here in front of us. What did you say it was preaching? It's not preaching. Well, then what were they prophesying at Corinth? Bruce, when Isaiah prophesied, he was telling people what was going to happen in the future. That's what prophecy is. Well, the church at Corinth is doing the same thing here. There were prophets in the church, for sure. Prophecy is one of the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, does that still exist today? I don't see any reason to say that it doesn't. Some people believe that it doesn't. So how do you know I'm not a prophet? You may very well be. I don't know. Amen. But, brother, what I'm telling you, well, here, here's a prophecy from Brother Bruce here. This type of doctrine will mislead people, and it has. The charismatic again, that's, that's not movement. Prophecy, Bruce. prophecy is predicting the future. Well, you got to repent from this teaching. If you literally believe that you could be overfilled. Yeah, if you literally believe you could be overfilled with something spiritual and supernatural that would cause you to utter gibber and speak some kind of gibberish in the middle of a church worship service, maybe you should consider the music they're playing. Stammering that might do lips. it. That will move your spirit and utterance. Bruce, stammering lips is what Isaiah called it. Exactly. And it's demonic. But but Isaiah said it would accompany salvation. Where? What verse? We read in chapter 28 and chapter 33. I thought you were here for the teaching. Isaiah 28? We read in 28 and in 33 at the beginning of the teaching. And then we read in, in 1 Corinthians 14 where he referenced that prophecy. I thought you said you were here for the teaching, Bruce. I listened. I mean, I don't know how close Christian, you, you could preach and preach and preach and preach and preach for 60 minutes. That doesn't mean you delivered it all. OK, it, it's got to have it's got to have a, a what's the word I'm looking for. It's got to have structure. It's got to have deliverance. OK, you, know, you, you could read 20 different Bible verses for an hour. Order, Bruce. The, the teaching was in chronological order. But you still can't answer who interprets the tongue. Yes, I did answer that. Yes, I did. Stop lying to my audience. Bruce. All right. So who interprets the tongues? Another member of the church who has the gift of interpretation. And that member is to be determined? What do you mean determined? What does that mean? Who is that person in the church that is given the gift to interpret? What do you want me to say, tongue? Johnny or Cindy? Well, it's if it's not referring to language, but what not, else could it be? It's not. It's not. We so it's referring. It's so hang on. I'm gonna, let me break this down here. You're saying that these interpreters are given the power by the Holy Spirit to interpret awesome. this tongue by the Holy Spirit. Yes. But no one knows what the language is being interpreted or translated, and it's not referring to another language. That's then, what why did, then why did Paul make an allowance for it in the church if it's not right? Bruce? Because if you may, if you were able to translate another language, another not tongue. What it says, Bruce. That's not what it says. Not what it says. But that's what tongue means. No, it's not, Bruce. Not in this context. It's not. You like to use the word context, but you don't know what it means. But you can't cross-reference any other scripture that validates we it. We read three chapters, and we read prophecies in Isaiah that were mentioned in the three chapters, Bruce. And, and I think read, you— Hold on, hold on, hold on, pause. Then we read three instances in Acts that referenced the three chapters in Corinthians that were prophesied in Isaiah. That's all the cross-referencing you could ever pray for, Bruce. How could you possibly watch us go so carefully through Old Testament prophecy, New Testament fulfillment, and then New Testament action of the fulfillment? And it's then constantly it's, out of context. It's not, though, Bruce. It's not. It's you constantly know out of context you know to fit context. your your doctrine of that this is an unknown supernatural language. Bruce, first off, that's not my doctrine. But you preached not, it. It is not out of context to say that one person can speak supernaturally and another person can interpret supernaturally, Paul said that would happen, and he said not to forbid it. 
but Paul was referring to languages. No, That's where you're incorrect. No he, no, he wasn't. That's a lie. That's a Baptist bunch of foolishness that has nothing to do with the Bible. So it's not necessary. It's like when you guys drink grape juice and call it communion. It's man-made foolishness, Bruce. It's not in the Bible. Well, it's to, to do that in remembrance. But but um, no, our Lord and Savior. wine, Bruce. Wine, not grape juice. Wine is grape juice. No, 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 no. Wine is fermented. Fermented. You guys drink grape juice and you violate the Holy. So communion. is it a big deal? It is a very big deal. If you're going to do it, you should do it right. Coming from a Calvinist and a Pentecostal. Well, Bruce, I'm not in an unknown I'm secret Bible. language given by the Spirit. Well, You're Bruce, funny. Paul did that too. Just like Paul took communion, he did that. So it's not me you have a, a disagreement with. It's the apostles. But I really don't want to scream all night. I mean, I understand you disagree with the way that I read these verses. That's fine. But Totally I, out of context. Oh, What's well, not? But I went through a whole lot of verses very slowly, very methodically. I opened myself up for q and I did everything a person can do to be in context. So the fact that you are impossible. Except bring a qualified pastor on. Bring Bruce, anyone else that also shares your similar doctrine. Who's a qualified pastor, Bruce. Name one. Bring one on. But no, 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 name one, Bruce. Who is a qualified pastor? You're, bring your pastor on. Bruce, you're the one mentioning. Bring that guy pastor. you were watching on YouTube last night on. I would be happy to talk to that guy. You're the one that brought him to my attention. He's welcome anytime. I think there's a very obvious reason you don't. Well, one, you don't attend to any other pastor. First, the reason you don't, I don't invite him because I don't have his phone number. That's the obvious reason. Well, you don't have a pastor, Christian. Bruce, Bruce you, I'm an evangelist. So you don't have a pastor. Bruce, who, who was Paul's pastor? Well, it's Jesus Christ. Right. But are you are you equivalent to Paul? No, but I'm also an evangelist. Still, evangelists had a pastor. Bruce, where does it say that? Well, if they're an evangelist out of the Church of Corinth, they I'm had not, bishops, disciples, true, overseers. Where does the Bible say evangelists must answer back to a certain pastor? Where's that verse in the Bible, Bruce? Well, it's not particularly those words, but the Bible says uh, submit to those who have rule over you who have first right, told you the truth. The congregation when it says that, not the ministry. So you're above the congregation. Yes, I'm in the ministry. And what puts you above the congregation? Just that choice to not be a part of the congregation and jump Bruce, into ministry and define I, scripture how Bruce, you want? Bruce, pause real quick. If you go to a church, do you know why they build the platform a little bit higher than the rest of the church? Yes. Why? Because they have authority to Bruce, preach the that, word of God. That, that's a good answer. But Are you real, ordained Christian? Yes. But the real answer, Bruce, that is a good answer. But the real answer is so everyone in the church can see and hear them because they are in a position above the church. The ministry is given responsibilities and privileges. So who ordained you? Well, first off, ordination comes from Christ, Bruce. Would you agree to that? So do you have several men who can put their signature on already, a document? I already, have I already have that, Bruce. It means nothing to me that I have it. Uh, that that's uh, I'm I'm sorry you feel that way, but no, I feel you know, that that's way. really a great accomplishment. No, that it's not, it's not true, Bruce. It's not true. If you I can have organization, make a paper is not real. It's not real. God does not. Sure it is. No, it's not, Bruce. Because when those men signed that certificate, they claim as a witness that this man is solid in the faith, truly believes and dedicate his life Which to means the faith. Nothing to God, Bruce. Nothing. Well. In a way, it is because well, these men give their word that they believe that this man word means nothing, Bruce. Nothing God to you. That calls, nothing to you. No, no, it I'm means gonna, nothing to you because you're you're Bible, rebellious the Bible, almost. The Bible, not your Baptist doctrine. The Bible. In the Bible, ministers are called of God. That's how the Bible shows it. Well, the Bible gives us instruction that most that, ministers are out of the church. They're not some independent but contractors. Show me one place where an evangelist answers back to a pastor. Just one, and I'll agree with you. Name an evangelist. Bruce, you're the one bringing this up. Show me one place where an evangelist in the Bible has to answer back to a pastor. Just one. Um, Philip. and Philip was an apostle. Either way, you're dodging a question. You don't no, have, no. You don't have no, five or good. six men. Nobody has the word of God to validate to. that you're a sound preacher. Nobody has to have that, Bruce. I know, but they I should. I have it, by the way, but nobody has to have that. I know, 
And that's how you get all these false doctrines. So and here's, I already said all that over I, do the place. Have it. I do have it. If that's what means so much to you, I can show you a little piece of paper with signatures on it. I have. So that. I was going to ask you, those, those men who signed your signature on mm -hmm. that certificate, do they believe that speaking in tongues is a gift of the spirit? Yes. Do they believe that all men are predestined to heaven or hell? One of them does not. Oh. See, that man. But Bruce, that's not relevant to the conversation. That man's going to be held accountable to God for that. But but Bruce, you, you're making up all these man-made rules that aren't in the Bible anywhere. You want people to believe your little man. Now, hang on. You got me You got me turning in three different places here. You got me trying to reference an fine. evangelist that was not out of the church. Yeah. And then, you know. No, they did not answer back to a pastor, Bruce. That was the question. I don't believe you can show me anywhere in the Bible where it Hebrews says 13, 17. answer back to a certain pastor. Obey them that have rule over you. Right. This is written for to they the Hebrews. watch. Obey the them Hebrews. that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls and they that must give account that they may do it with Who joy and not with grief. Who are the they? The rulers, right. the, the pastors, the, 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 the people that have... Um, the ministry. People like me, Bruce. Obey them that right. have rule over you. Yeah, you submit should yourselves, obey me. for they That's watch for your soul. Bruce, it's saying that you should obey me. That's what it's saying. No way, Jose. Yeah, See, it's hard to spot counterfeit money if you've never seen real money before. That's Christian, I know real salvation. I know what the Bible says. I know how to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And speaking in tongues is not one of them. I, I'm sorry. That's why a great majority of evangelical churches do not practice it. But Bruce, I'm sorry that you disagree with the apostles. That's something you'll have to work out within yourself. I can't help you with that. I disagree with you because you're not interpreting no, it in context. The apostles, Bruce. We've been quoting the apostles. Out of context. No, not out of context. In diligence. The context. apostles are not referring the apostles to spoke with other supernatural language. The gave them utterance. All the apostles them. were not referring Every to an unknown supernatural language Every that nobody could interpret. Be quiet. If they were referring... Bruce, I'm going to have Logan mute you if you don't quit. For the sake of the audience, I have to tell the truth. All 12 apostles that were there in the upper room and Paul as a 13th apostle, all 13 of them spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them other up. languages. That's not what it says, Bruce. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's it. That's what acts. That's what happened. Bruce, that Bruce, that's not true. You're not being honest with the audience right now. You need no, to No, I'm sorry, audience. Christian. I know it's me and you here, but you're the one that's not being honest. You're but not identifying Bruce, that you can I be out of context this. and incorrect. You the Baptist handbook. That's what you brought. The Bible? You brought a little Baptist handbook that says if they say this, you got to say this. And if they say this, you got to say this. And I brought the Word of God. Actually, you're using the Baptist handbook. No, Bruce, you guys don't believe in the Word of God. You believe in your handbook. Then why do we use the same handbook? But but you don't, Bruce, because we just went over passages that you don't believe in. Do you want to? Do I need to turn my camera on and show you my King James Bible? I don't believe the same that you one. Own one. I just don't believe that you think it's true. I believe 100% it's true. I don't uh, believe you're interpreting it, uh, and I don't believe you are ever willing to accept the fact that you are not interpreting it correctly, which is why you if don't you submit to a that, pastor, you, you don't go that. to one church. You could display that, Bruce. If you could display that one time, I would accept it. I'm uh, Display what? That you're preaching this out of context? We were Well, that's not true, obviously. But we were talking about whether or not speaking in tongues is poison of asps under the lips. And if we know that all 13 disciples did it, you just called the, the disciples of Jesus Christ snakes. Well, the point of that verse is that they're, they're referring to a language. Bruce, I don't care if you believe the gifts of the Spirit are still active today. That's that's a different subject. We're talking about what was happening in the early church. We know it was happening then. So in Revelation 11, 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. What is that word tongues referring to, Christian? In that case, it's referring to people from different languages, Bruce. Okay. So 11, chapter 10. Bruce, you're, you're 11. making an evident mistake of being out of context. You're violating your Actually, own. Actually, Christian, that's what I'm trying to point out. That I, I, know, I know what you're trying to point out. I'm just helping you. So I, what, I'm, what I'm pointing to these verses is that any most verses... In the Bible, the word tongues, flinch, 
It's referring to another language being spoken. But Bruce, that doesn't mean that these verses are. That doesn't mean they're not either. No, it does mean that because we read that the gift of tongues was something that the Spirit moved upon a person to do. We read that over and over again. What verse is that particularly that you're referring Two, to? 10, 19, 12, 13. We got to do the whole teaching over again, Bruce. I thought you were here. What happened to you were here? Because you're being intellectually dishonest. You already know what it says. You heard me read it. But you want to keep doing these loops and loops because you don't want to accept So it. Acts 19. Right. They spake with tongues mm -hmm. and prophesied. Yes. What you do don't you, think that's referring to languages? What do you think happened there? If you could go back in a time machine, Bruce, what do you think you would see? I think Paul's probably playing, praying in, in Hebrew. Th then why in Acts chapter 10, when the same thing happened, did Peter say, I can tell that they've received the Holy Ghost because they received it the same way that we did, speaking in tongues and magnifying God? That's called context, Bruce. So I've got a question for both of you, if I may. Please. All right. So in 1 Corinthians 13, it, it's pretty clear that tongues are going to cease. Uh, prophecies are going to cease. Knowledge is going to vanish away. Uh, my question is, when it says, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. What is that in the context of, of this passage? That's a good question. So, you know, the reason I pointed that out when I was reading through that chapter, even though it's a little slightly a different subject, but the reason I was pointing that out was because if people want to know when tongues, prophecy, knowledge, etc., when those things are set to cease, it sort of gives you the answer in the text, which I think, of course, you already know this. It says that when the perfect thing comes, these other things that are in part shall be done away with. So whenever that which is perfect has come, that is when those things are to cease. So if we're going to, like I was telling Bruce, this is a bit of a different subject, but if we're going to talk about like cessationism, then all we have to do is establish when that which is perfect has come. When we stop seeing in part and we start to know and understand even as we are known, because that is the point that those things cease. So that's the subject of just saying, hey, when do you guys think this is in the prophetical timeline? Do you think it's already happened? Do you think it will happen? And that would be more of like a, I guess, like a timeline thing, which I thought about doing one of those actually. So what is that? What What is that which is perfect and that which is in part? Oh, you're asking what my opinion is? Both of you. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe it's... And, and I, I can share what my, my thought is real quick. I think that's the canon of Scripture that we we have. Revol Revelation was... It closed the canon of Scripture when John penned the last verse. Uh, is, my, is my thoughts on that. Because they did have some Scripture, but they didn't have the full Revelation. Yeah, that was given to John on the Isle of Patmos to yeah. complete that. And and all they had before it was in part. They didn't have the full picture, the full story. But anyway, Bruce, what do you think that? That's a very interesting answer. What do you think that is? That which is perfect. I don't um I don't quite understand the question you're asking. So we know that tongues are gonna cease, knowledge is gonna vanish away, prophesying will go away as well. Uh that's in first corinthians chapter 13 but it also says but that but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away um what is that which is in part and what is it that's perfect what is that in in the context of verse 10 the perfect knowledge of god so scripture you agree that it's scripture <clears throat> yeah for we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when which is perfect is come, then that which is part shall be done away. So eventually, as we continue to prophesy and translate or interpret, you know, the, that perfectness that it's describing is just the perfect knowledge and truth in God that has been revealed to them. Well, all we know about God is from Scripture. Amen. As God Christian, is the Word, and the Word is God, and the Word was God. What did you say? Do you, do you agree that that which is perfect is is the canon of Scripture, the complete Bible, or, or do you I, see it another way? I don't. That's part of it. Uh, I don't see it that way, but I can I can understand that point of view. I don't think that's unreasonable at all. I, I don't think I've ever considered it like that. I think that's very interesting. 
And now you kind of have me wanting to schedule a show where we can discuss this. But the what I understand that which is perfect to be is the Thessalonian change. And the reason I feel that way is because it says that the fivefold ministry, now that's you know terms that I use, of course, but it says the ministry was put into the church for the perfecting of the saints. And when you look at uh, the translation in Thessalonians and Corinthians, when we take upon ourselves those glorified bodies, it is my understanding that that's the completion of the ministry, presenting the body of Christ perfect to her husband, and that that is that which is perfect. But I don't think that your answer is a bad answer. It's a very interesting answer. Well, I think we can all agree that tongues either were or are a gift, and at some point they will cease. Uh, and, and it just seems to me that whatever that is, which is perfect, is come, that's the signifying of the cessation of these signed gifts, these apostolic gifts. Yeah. So really the crux of the matter is what is that? What is that which is perfect? You know, that's what I was saying. I didn't, as I was reading it, you came to my mind and I thought, man, this would be a good one for me and Mark to. We, to we still got to find scripture that validates speaking in tongues is a gift from the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm. We still... did do that. Oh, Bruce. Really? Oh, what one was that? Chapter 12 of first Corinthians. I thought it was chapter 14. No, it was chapter 12. I'll tell you, if I wasn't a Bible scholar, I will be when I get done talking to Bruce. I promise you. Well, a lot of evangelists are Bible scholars. It's supposed to be. So 1 Corinthians 12? I think it was in 12, yeah, where he lists off the gifts of the Spirit. And what? what, what, what? Let me pull it back up. I'm going to have to do the same teaching four times before the night is over. I'm a slow learner, dude. That's okay. I am too. Okay, so I'm going to drop back. Let me see. I'm just going to start at the beginning of 12, and I'll read down until we get to the meeting. Is that okay with everybody? But read right. it five times. I'll read about five times. <laughs> I mean, okay. is it necessary? You just need to read the first verse. Now concerning spiritual I mean, that's what gifts, I was asking, man. I mean, and what it verse goes are you on to talk to? about tongues. So obviously, now concerning spiritual, spiritual gifts, gifts, brethren, I would know that have you not ignorant. Keep reading. Ye know that you mm -hmm. were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you understand, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed. How many people that speak in tongues don't believe in Jesus? Keep reading, Bruce. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. <clears throat> And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of the healing by the same Spirit, to another, the works of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues, kinds of languages. Hold on, let's just read it, Bruce. Don't add your doctrine. To another, the interpretation of languages, tongues. Bruce, why do you have to change the Bible? I was using the ESV, ESV version. Oh, you were KJV, Bruce. What happened? You know, the ESV version actually does say languages. Well, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Oh, that must mean tongues means languages. I thought you were a KJV kind of guy, Bruce. <laughs> but all these worketh that one, the self-same spirit, dividing to every man that severely as he will. Severally. So we can see there that diverse kinds of tongues and the interpretation of tongues are gifts of the spirit. That's only correct if tongues is meaning an unknown language. It means it a common that? language. Where does it say that? Help me. What else does tongues mean? Forgive me. So what I'm asking is where in Scripture... Tongues are get... languages. Tongues are languages, but there's right. diverse kinds of But tongues, what language is meaning it? Meaning there's diverse kinds of languages. Yeah, Paul spoke of heavenly languages. Well, how, What does that mean, diverse so, languages? Sure, tongues... By and large, can be known languages. I mean, yes, I'm sure. Which I, which I agree just with. like when but you say you live, two, it said they heard in their own language, their own tongue. Yes, 
So diverse means many different spoken kinds. languages, yes. but all also alludes to different kinds of tongues. So where do you get that there is this made up tongue that no one can interpret or only special Nobody's spiritual people that. can interpret? Well, actually, Nobody's first, saying that. the first part of, of Corinthians 14 almost implies that. But Bruce, I go back to my point from earlier. Even if it was always a different language, let's say that it was always a different language. It would still be a supernatural thing of speaking a language you had never learned before. Yeah. But it's talking about preaching and prophesying in a common language where all people could understand and be, you know, you filled from? by what is being said. It is not referring to a secret language that no one could else understand and only some can interpret. It literally says that, Bruce. Over in 14, it literally says, you're speaking a language no man understandeth. Pray that you may interpret. In those words. Yeah, pray that someone can interpret the language you're speaking. Well, we just read that interpretation of tongues is a gift of the Spirit, Bruce. Not but that is tongue. still not saying that it is an unknown language that only the Spirit can give you. It's saying that if you're saying, if you're preaching and prophesying in a language, find someone, two or three people that can interpret. And if you read may the whole I, chapter of 14, it says that. May I um, say something to Bruce? Sorry, I just died a little bit. I, I'm sorry, but I, I'm really trying hard not to interrupt. But Bruce, I've been listening to you. I don't think you and I have ever dialogued before. I'm faithful to Jesus. That's my legal. We name. have. Okay. I. It's been a long time. My my recall isn't real fresh on it. I. I don't. I'm listening to you talk, and I'm thinking that possibly you've never never gone into an area where Jesus could open your understanding to this because it seems like it seems as if your understanding to this isn't opened when people are what people are sharing with you and it's coming not from me but it's coming from two two men here that they're sharing with you their understanding Mark's understanding is different than Christian's understanding and and well, actually, they can, faithful, but they can quick, agree. I, I agree with everything Christian has said. The only the only thing that Christian and I disagree on is the timing of the cessation of yeah. these. So, well, I, I, I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. They don't agree on every single thing. Yeah. I don't agree on every single thing with Christian. However, I've been around this for 50 years. If you had been listening, you could you would have heard a brief testimony that I gave from back in 1971 or 72, January 2nd. So since 1972, I've been around tongues. I've been around false tongues. I've been around real tongues. I've been around tongues that were actual languages. I've been around tongues that were supernatural languages. And just recently, a man that I know who is an apostle, he's a recognized apostle around the world, oh. was, was in, now you can believe it or not, it doesn't matter, but I'm just going to tell you, and I can, that he was in um, Tennessee, and at the end of his message, he, under the anointing and unction of the Holy Ghost, delivered a message and interpreted it himself. There are, There is such a thing as being able to interpret what thus saith the Lord under the anointing of God. Now, what I'm just going to say to you, and I'm not admonishing you, I'm saying to you, Please leave your go in and instead of going in with a closed off mind and wanting to know, ask people to give you answers. I need an answer for this and for this and for this. When I started out in this, I sounded a lot like you. I don't know. I don't understand this. I don't give up. And, no, you I didn't. In. I have never given up. I've never given in. But what I did do was I went to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. And I said, open my understanding, much as the same way the the men that were on, was it the road to Emmaus? Hey, their understanding was opened and then they understood. Ask Jesus to open your understanding instead of asking so ask these questions and go to him and ask for understanding. Either he's going to give you understanding or you're not, or and if he does Please receive it. Let me say that something. is the best. That's the best thing that I could I could say. And thank you for letting me say that. No, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I just I want to say something real quick. 
I apologize for the hostility and the way that I spoke about the Baptists. I believe that Baptists love the Lord. I believe Bruce loves the Lord. That was just a moment of frustration, and I apologize to my Baptist brethren. I should not have said that. I mean, if you were to pick any denomination to join in the Bible, I mean, I would pick the Baptists. That's the one. There are any denomination. In the Bible. That's, a classic. That's a classic. There's I know no a lot of Baptists that do talk in tongues, by the way, and it's real. Well, that doesn't mean it's right. Faithful, I, I just, you sound like a very nice person. I could tell you know the Lord, but I, I just have a suspicion that you're not one to really confront or try to go towards conflict, which is a lot of times what you get, especially in person or at a church, when you confront false doctrines and false teachings. So it sounds to me just that it fronted you pretty good. Uh, uh, and you know, I remember Bruce, I wasn't very have, nice Bruce, to her last you, time. I do Bruce, remember that. you have you have a right to feel that way, and uh, I would rather treat you with love than to come down on you the way that I am, the well, way that we're capable of doing. And I choose not to do that because I care about you, and I would rather have you learn than to come on onto you strong as I can and I have in the past on some of these shows. I prefer not to do that because yeah. I care about you and I want to see you learn and I want to see you grow. And I do care about you. I do love you with the love of Christ. Well amen.